If you've been struggling with your two-handed backhand, you're in the right place because in today's video, I'm going to be giving you some of my best tips to help you transform your two-handed backhand. My name is Jeff Salzenstein. I'm the founder of Tennis Evolution. I'm passionate about helping players just like you get to the next level. And we're gonna be delivering some powerful tips today in this lesson that are gonna help you tomorrow when you step on the court and in the long term. And before we get to the lesson, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, you turn on your notifications, and hey, if you like this video, share it with others because when you share, it helps spread the word that we're helping a lot of tennis players out there with their game. So let's get to that lesson right now. Over here at Tennis Evolution, we get video reviews all the time from players and they're saying, hey, I'm not getting enough power on my backhand and it actually has a lot to do with where you're standing and how you're moving. And I see this common problem all the time. Here's the problem. You are standing too close to the baseline. I've seen this time and time again from players telling me that their coaches are saying, you need to take the ball early. You need to get the ball on the rise. But here's what I see. Players are standing on the baseline in a rally, and when they see the ball come to their backhand, what do they do first? They go backwards. And whenever you go backwards, it's going to be a lot harder to get your body weight into the shot to hit a beautiful backhand. So it looks something like this. You're on the baseline, you're waiting for the ball to come, the ball comes and your first move is back. And now you're hitting off your back foot. And it all starts because of your positioning. You're standing too close to the baseline. So tip number one for you, it's very simple. Take a step back, maybe a step and a half back. Now, I am three to four feet behind the baseline right now. I can survey the court, I can keep the ball in front of me. Because when I'm up here, now the ball can get on me really fast. I'm short hopping, I'm moving back to hit the ball, okay? I even see players on wide backhands, they run across like this, back to the ball, and they try to swing, and no wonder they don't have power. So, we just start by reevaluating our court positioning. I just took one step back and now I'm feeling comfortable. Now, players are gonna say, wait a minute, Jeff, if I move back, now my opponent's going to drop shot me. I'm gonna struggle with low balls. Okay, you have to sacrifice something. You either have to make the choice that you're gonna be here covering the short ball, or you're gonna be here and you're gonna be able to move up to your backhand. There's a lot of talk out there about how you've got to get behind the ball with your outside leg before you step in. And that tip is great if you can do it. But in tennis, it's dynamic. You're under stress. You're going to find yourself in this position sometimes. You have to know what to do when you're out there. You have to understand how to get yourself out of that jam. So one solution is to get out there and learn to hit with an open stance. That would be great, but a lot of players struggle actually learning to hit an open stance backhand. I know it wasn't easy for me. One reason it wasn't easy for me is that I had a tendency to lean in when I swung on my backhand. Poor mechanics, poor footwork, poor understanding of rhythm, timing, and tempo. So then when I went to go open stance, I was also leaning forward. So I'm going to give you a tip today that's going to make a huge difference here. Now, the first tip that I want to give you is that when you're running wide for your backhand, if you are stepping in and stepping across after you hit the ball, you've got to square up like this into a wide base. Now, I see some players try to do this. Okay, they'll come out and they'll swing, but what happens is they swing around like this. It's almost like, they, it's like they're uh, on a tilt or whirl like this. They swing around but there's, they're not doing the right move at the right time. There's a lot of flaws to that. So, two, so that problem, I'm gonna show you one more problem here. Stepping across and not even bringing the leg around, reaching, which I opened this video with today. So we've gotta correct both issues. But let me get back to that squaring up move where you bring the leg around like this. Notice how this foot is way in front of this one and then a lot of times players are in a narrow stance and they're sticking their butt out. So what you want to practice doing is as you're running out, make sure that when you're done with the swing, you're in a wide base like this. Super wide and this foot is not going to be as far in front. 
it's going to be wide like this and it's going to happen after you make contact so it's not swing around like this the same time that you make contact it's hit and then swing around hit and then swing around i'll show you right now all right so i run wide and then i swing around that's how it's done so that's one way to to find this move where you hit it first then you swing around and you finish in a wide base now a big key is, and i mentioned earlier you don't want to stick your butt out so when you're done with the swing you want to be in what's called horse stance where if you look at your my hips right now if i stick my butt out pretend that i have a bucket of water here my hips the water is tilting forward if I push my hips forward and pretend I'm sitting in a chair with my upper body upright, then the, then the water can't spill out. So we go from this position to this position. So what I would do is I would practice every day being in this horse stance position. Look how low I am. This is where Djokovic is. Get those quads to burn. Squeeze those glutes. Don't let this position happen. This is where most people are. Forward butt out, chest forward. They're trying to find stability. So you get in a wide ba base and you get into that horse stance. If you just do that, it's gonna make a huge difference. Now, how do you learn it when you're playing? Again, you get out there and you just shadow stroke and you get to this position and you check it. You can record it, you can take a picture of it from the side, you can compare it to this video and try to match it up to what I'm doing. The larger the gap with this movement, the more you're gonna struggle with the wide backhand. So, when you're finished, you're in that wide base. Now, I'm gonna give you some secret sauce right here. Are you ready? Okay, for those that stuck around for this entire video, you're in for a treat. This is something I didn't notice until I really studied the pros. No coach ever taught me this. I'm gonna teach you right now. It's cool to swing around, to square up at the end, but what makes it even better is when you swing, if you can feel this leg release and get off the ground as you land on this leg. Watch again. I swing, I land on the outside leg, and as I'm landing on the outside leg, this foot came off the ground a little bit. It's that unweighting, unweighting of this foot that allows you to feel balanced at the end. Where people get in trouble talked about this earlier is they 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 swivel around this they swivel around this foot and they rotate like this that's not how it's done you're going to hit the ball and then you're going to unweight and it's it, I call it a jump around now there's bigger jump arounds where you really get off the ground like that but you don't have to jump high you just need to feel a little unweight so instead of twisting your foot your front foot like this to square up you actually your foot's completely to the side so instead of twisting you hit and you jump and then you make sure you square up so i'll do it with a ball now this one move helped release my two-handed backhand and help my posture so instead of being forward like this i actually got my posture upright and now you can see I landed here. Now this is an advanced move, but let me ask you this. How many people are gonna show you this move regardless of your level? So if you can't do this now, what if you trained yourself to do it? What if in a year from now, I want you to think about possibilities. Imagine in two years that you can actually make this move. How would your backhand improve? You've gotta practice mini squats and even single leg squats. You've gotta practice can you do single leg squats? I bet if you do them, there's a chance that this leg is gonna collapse in. So you gotta do these all day long, seven days a week, and then some. Just do this, because you need the single leg strength to be able to go and stick the landing, right? Stick the landing, you don't wanna be wobbly. Most of you can't even do that. I'm not picking on you, I'm just being honest that your body can't do a lot of the things the pros can do. So think about how you can train, you can train your body to get stronger, to be more mobile, to be more stable.
when you see a ball come to your backhand side, instead of crossing over first, which by the way, isn't wrong. A lot of pros do it and we're, we'll talk about that a little bit today. You're gonna focus on stepping out with your outside leg after the split. So you're gonna split, you're gonna step out, you're gonna shuffle, and then you're gonna step and hit. And this is a rhythm move that a lot of the pros use. More pros on the, uh, that hit one-handed backhands do this than two-handers, but there are two-handers that, that do it. So let me show it to you again. You come out of the split, you step out, you shuffle, you step. Now the question that came to me, actually a couple questions that came to me. One is, if you make this shuffle move, if you make this shuffle move, aren't you going to be late on your backhand? I'm assuming compared to just stepping across and running across and hitting the ball. And my answer is no, you're not going to be late. You're not gonna be late because you're gonna time the move correctly. If you don't time it correctly, if you shuffle too late and the ball is already by you, you know, it's to you or behind you by the time you try to step in, yes, you're gonna be late. But that, that's the case with any shot in tennis. The key is to time the rhythm and the movement so that when you step out and when you shuffle right here, the ball is still approaching you. The ball is starting to bounce and you have time to step in before the ball gets to you. So you have to read the ball coming off the strings, see that it's coming to your backhand and you make this move before the ball gets to you. Now you're totally loaded, all right? This isn't much different than crossing over and loading right here and hitting an open stance backhand. So the real key, like I said, is making sure you time this shuffle move before the ball gets to you so you have time to step in. You'll never be late if you do it this way. Now here's what's cool about this move. A lot of players are gonna get crossed up when they just step across and swing like this. If the ball comes fast, look what I can do. Quick shuffle, step. Watch the, walk, watch the quickness. Quick shuffle, step. If the ball comes slower, I can actually take more time, right? So the rhythm of your move, the rhythm of your move on this, on this footwork is dictated by the speed of the ball. So if you find that you're late making this move, then you need to make this move quicker, right? You make this move quicker and you get to that front foot sooner. So if you're noticing that you're late, you're gonna make this move and you're gonna step early. The speed of how you move with the shuffle is determined by the speed of the ball. I think it's better to learn how to shuffle quick and step like that, that rhythm move, watch it. One, two, three. Then to see the ball come fast and just step across and reach, which is what I see a lot of players do. Yes, the low backhand, when the ball's in the transition part of the court, you get that short ball. Maybe you're playing a consistent player who likes to slice. Maybe they hit short. The ball's dropping low in singles or doubles. And you're just not practicing this shot and you don't have an understanding of how to practice it and what to work on. I'm gonna show you what to do today because it's this shot that you're getting three, four, five times a set. Over the course of an entire match, you might get seven to 10 balls that are low on your backhand side and you're you're flubbing it, you're messing up, you're missing it, you're struggling, you don't know what to do. And here's the common problem that I see. I'm talking about the ball that's moving you off the court towards the single sideline. And that's the ball that you're struggling with because you're running off the court and you're getting on your front foot like this right here. And that's causing you to lose your balance and to tip your upper body over your lower body it's causing your momentum to continue off the court, off towards the alley. So when I review match play of players and they get this ball, again, I'm seeing them on their front foot and I'm seeing them maybe even go to the slice and there's nothing on the ball. They get passed and they wonder why. I see them try to hit it and it goes through the middle of the court. They get lobbed or they get passed. What you have to do, number one, is work on your footwork here. So the first thing I want you to practice when you see this ball, and this is one of the hardest things to do, because even when I tell players to do it, they still struggle with it. You have to work on getting your outside leg in front of your body like this, so that when you swing, your front foot or your inside leg comes through. Too often, players, they think they're doing this, but by the time they swing, they're actually on their front foot again. 
it's because you've trained your whole life stepping into your backhand. And there's nothing wrong with stepping in. I love stepping in at the baseline. It's the best, it's, it's amazing. It's the best way to do it. You get plenty of power back there. But when you're moving forward, you have to switch it up. You have to train your body to go off this leg. Most players have an easier time doing this off the forehand side. Very challenging for them to get the coordination to do it off the right side. Now, do you think you're gonna go out tomorrow and play a match and get this right away? Most players won't. So I advise you to get out a bucket of balls, outside, inside. And you'll see how smooth that looks because I've trained my body to get this leg in front to swing and then step through. Most of you are gonna to want to get to this foot as you swing. And that's gonna throw your timing and your rhythm off. This is one reason you're struggling with your transition game and finishing points. You think you're not finishing points at the net, but when I study video, it's not the, the volleys, it's actually the transition shots that's causing you to lose points, point after point after point. So you get out on the court and you just work on, even if it's near the middle of the court, as long as you're moving off to the side a little bit, you can open up your stance and get your hips facing. Another problem with stepping in is when you step in, you're gonna block your hips. Even if you step in and you come through like this, you're gonna run into the ball. You'll get too close to the ball when you do this. You'll get too uh, close to the ball with your hips blocked swinging, and then you won't be able to hit great angles or, or disguise the ball down the line or with angle. You're just gonna plop it through the middle of the court. So practice, practice coming up on the outside leg and jogging through like I just did and you just jog through, just practice, drop it. You can even drop it, take one step with this foot, not this foot, one step, swing, then step through and then start jogging. A lot of players, they'll step in and then they just stop their momentum and then they try to run forward. That's not the way to do it. If you are able to get to here and then you step to here, guess what? Afterwards, you have to keep jogging. You can't just, you can't just step here and stop and look at where your ball went. You have to keep moving. It's dynamic movement and balance like that. So the other problem that shows up is that when you're standing on the baseline and you're moving back like this and you swing on your backhand, you're blocking your hips. You're stepping across. So you're coming across here, coming across the court, you're stepping across and you're keeping this back leg behind you like this. You're never going to get power if you do this. It's all going to be arm. Believe me, I know this. I was guilty of this. I used to joke that I have a, I still, it's still true today. I have a high altitude backhand because I would run over and hit my backhand and I would lean in like this. High altitude, keeping the ball in. What you wanna do is when you're moving to hit a ball, if you find that your feet are crossed over, if you step across like this, you must square up afterwards or you must jump around. Yes, jump around. The best backhands in the world, when they get wide and they step across and they block their hips, they hit the ball and they jump around like this. You're losing power because of your court positioning, because you're moving backwards, and because you're blocking your hips. Here's the good news. We can fix it right now. Again, doesn't matter if you have a two-hander or a one-hander. You step back, like I talked about earlier. So now I'm back. So the next move that you're going to make, you're going to be moving at a diagonal. So your goal when you play tennis is to hit as many balls as you can where you're moving at an angle, okay? You don't wanna be back here and actually moving across the court. Of course, if the ball is coming deeper and you're back here, yes, you're going to have to get, go back. If they hit the ball deep, you might have to run across. But most of the time, if the ball lands just past the service line, and a lot of balls do in tennis, you're going to be standing here and you're gonna move up into the court. And I want you to notice that I made contact on the baseline. So that same ball, where if you're standing on the baseline and you move back like this, the same ball where you're hitting off your back foot and you're getting no power in, that's the same ball, but you can actually get on the baseline. 
So now what I want you to do is set this intention that you're going to stand back and that you're going to move at a diagonal as many balls as you can. And the cool thing is you can either shuffle at a diagonal and step in and hit it, or you can step across your body, which I like this move. A lot of players are going to step across and almost gallop up to the ball. So they're going to step across and then they're going to do a little gallop step and they're going to rip. Now I hope you enjoyed this lesson today and I'm curious, which tip did you like the most? Which tip do you think is going to help you improve your two-handed backhand? I'd love to hear in the comments below. And before you go today, I want to offer you uh, more free content, right? So we want to offer you the ability to learn the three forehand mistakes that just about everybody is making. So if you click below this video, there should be a link in the description or somewhere in this video, we're gonna reveal the three biggest mistakes people are making on their forehands. And if you can learn these mistakes and then use the solutions I give you, you can also transform your forehand. So go ahead and click below underneath this video in the link in the description, the, excuse me, the link that's in the description or somewhere in this video. And I look forward to helping you continue to improve your game.